Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Lesson 17, Drawing the Coordinate Plane and Points on. So I brought in a ruler here. Whenever graphing, you should always be precise. You should always use a ruler as a straight edge so we can draw a nice straight line. So I'm going to put this right here and I'm going to draw a line. Rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, so I can move it here. Okay. All right, so here's my coordinate plane. This is a grid. They were, we were told it was 20 by 20, so I counted over 10 and put a dot there so where it was, and I counted down 10 and put a dot there so where that was, okay? So I wanted to split up 20, halfway is 10, obviously, okay? So in order to do a correct graph, first thing we need to draw are the two axes, the x-axis and the y-axis. Put arrows at both ends to indicate they go on forever. This is the Y axis, so I'm going to put a Y up here. And the horizontal axis is the X axis, so I'm going to put an X there. I'm going to label my origin zero. And then I'm going to count over one, two, three, four, five. And it gets kind of messy if you try to label every single unit. So I'm just labeling every fifth. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Make sure I did this correctly. And that is ten. Count negative one, negative two, negative three, four, five. This is negative five. And then negative six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's right here at the end. Do the same thing on the y axis. One, two, three, four, five. Draw a line here. Put a five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Draw a line here. And that is a ten. Okay. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, and negative six, seven, eight, nine, ten, negative ten. So there is a grid all set up. Y is labeled, X Y axis is labeled, X axis is labeled, origin is labeled zero, and every fifth unit, all directions. So that is how we would label a coordinate plane on a graph, on a piece of graph. Okay, so now example one says, locate and label the points 3, 2, and so on on the grid above. Okay, so I'll put that like that so I can see them. I'm going to color code all of these. Here's 3, 2 in green. So I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, positive x. Remember our coordinates are x comma y. x is left right, y is up down depending on the sign. Positive means right, positive means up. So right three, up two is the point three two, and it's right here. So we can label it. Put a dot where the location is and label it. The next one is going to be eight four. Eight four is eight on the positive x axis. Up four, positive four is right here. That is eight. Four. Okay, and now I'm going to graph negative three, eight. Negative three on the x means left three. Up eight is, or positive eight is up eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's the point, negative three, eight. I'm going to graph negative 2, negative 9, which means left 2, down 9, negative 2, comma, negative 9, 0, 6, it's 0, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Be careful. These are the most common errors when you're graphing a 0, be it an X or a Y. Really think about what that means. That means go zeros, go right or left, 0, go up, 6. 
Now we start at the origin. So we start at the origin and go left one, down two. So we start at the origin, left one, down two, and that is the point negative one, negative two. And then finally 10, negative two is a positive 10. Always put parentheses around your ordered pairs. And that's how you graph and label. Example two says to draw a coordinate plane on the grid below and then locate and label the following points. Okay, this is just repeated. So let's go through it again. For those of you who want to see this example again, I'll do it one more time. Bring this down. It's a 2020 grid, I'm assuming, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10, okay. Right there. It's red for the axis. And rotate this. 90 degrees. Move it over 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Eight, nine, ten. It's really important that you're accurate with these. So please do use a ruler when you're whenever you're asked to do this. Don't forget to label your axes arrows at the end showing infinity. Okay, and label the origins here. So I have my y-axis labeled, my x-axis labeled, the origin labeled, arrows at the ends of my lines, straight lines drawn. Okay, straight edge. Now it says to graph negative 420. Now, in this case, look at the size of the numbers. 20, 35, 40. So now that I've made a grid, I have to make this fit. So I can't go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm nowhere near 20. And if I go down 10, I'm negative 40 is way off the screen. So I need to go by a larger scale. So if I do 2s, that'd be 2, 4, 6, 8. That'll only get me to 20, negative 20. I need negative 40. So if I go by 5s, so I'm going to go by 5s. So it's 5, 10, 15, 20. 25. So this will be 50. 5, 10, 50, 20, 25. So we have to show our scale. And another 25. 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. And then the negative, negative 5, 10, 50, 20, negative 25. And over here is negative 50, negative 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and all the way down here to negative 50. Okay, now I'm going to graph the point negative 4, 20. Okay, now I have a problem with that. Well, there's negative 4, but I can still do it on this grid, but my x's, so let's take a look at these. I accounted for the y's. Y's were large, negative 40, 10, negative 35, 35, 20. But my x's are negative 4, negative 3, 1, 6, and 9. They're all less than 10. So yes, I could put them in this grid, but look where negative 4 would be. It's approximation. It would be around here if this was 5. Understand what I'm saying? So 4 is between 0 and 5, and then you have to estimate how far. So I can fix that by changing my unit of measurement for my x-axis. Because I only need, the largest number I need for x is 9. I have 10, so I go actually by 1, so this is 5, and this is 10. And that's okay as long as you're showing the person who's reading this graph your intentions and they know what your scale is, it's okay to scale one different than the other as long as you label it properly. So now we're going to be using the grids exactly. So if I go to graph this, I'm going to graph negative 4 of 20. I'm going to go over negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, then go up 5, 10, 15. 
it's going to be the point negative 4, comma, 20. Then I'm going to graph negative 3, 35. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35 is right here. That is negative 3, 35. And 1, negative 35 over 1, down 25, 30, 35. 1, comma, negative 35. And 6, 10 is over 6, up 5, 10. Don't forget your scale. You're graphing the y. And then finally, 9, negative 40. 9 is all the way over here. But negative 40 is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So this is 9. So there are the five, four point, five points, one, two, three, four, five points of my axis to here. So this was also a unit of measurement scaling exercise. So you can scale stuff so it fits well. Okay. Here's another one. Draw a coordinate plane on the grid below to locate and label the following points. To save time here, I'm going to pause the video and make my grid first. Okay, so here's my grid. Nice straight lines, arrows at the end of all of these, y-axis labeled, x-axis labeled, origin. Now I need to look at my scale. 0.1, negative 0.7, 0.4, 0 0.8. Largest number is 0.8. So rather than call this one and have squeeze everything in between 0 and 1, that'd be impossible, it'd be crazy, it wouldn't be accurate. So we're going to go 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. So this is 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Just go show your reader what you mean. So this is negative, or this is negative. This is 1.0. Go to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But that is negative 0 0.5. And this would be negative 1.0. I go up, I'm looking at a 4, a 7, a negative 5, 3, and a 1. So these are integers, the largest one being 7. I'm just going to use a unit measurement of 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 here, and call this 10. And go down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, call that negative 5, and all the way down here is negative 10. So I'm showing my reader that my unit of measurement is 1 tenth. On the x-axis, my unit of measurement is one whole unit. On the and now I'm going to graph. So 0 0.1, 0 0.14, dot, 0 0.1, comma, 4, 0 0.5, right here, up 7, is right here, 0 0.5, comma, 7. Negative 0.7, negative 5, negative 0.5, negative 0.6, negative 0.7, negative 5. And then negative 0 0.4 is right here. So I go left, negative 0 0.4, up 1, 2, 3. 0, negative, negative 0 0.4. And then 0.8 comma 1. So 0.8 is here, comma 1 is here, 0 0.8 comma 1. So there are my points with the proper unit of measurement on my scales. Example 4 determine a scale for the x axis that will allow all x coordinates to be shown on your grid. So now they're telling us the steps and what we need to do with this. Determine the scale for the y which is what I've done in the last two examples, and then draw and label the coordinate plane, and then locate and label the set of points. Let me first draw and label the coordinate plane. I'll pause it and just bring it in. Okay, so here's my two straight lines. Let's do this. This is Y. This is X. Arrows. Arrow. Always start with that. Then look at your unit of measure. Negative 14 is an x. Negative 4, 6. Positive 14, 0. Negative 8. 
So I have to come up with something that'll fit it. And these are the X's. So if I go by twos, that should work. Because ones won't work, because tens here, 14 will be up here, negative, or 14 will be up here, negative 14 will be here. So let's just go by twos. And I'll do every other one. So this is four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, And then going this way, negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8, negative 10, negative 12, negative 14, negative 16, negative 18, negative 20. Alright, so there's my scale for my x-axis. Now I want to look at the scale for my y, so I look at my y values. 2, a half, 3 fifths, or 3 and a half, 2 and a half, 3 and a half, and 4. Okay, so my biggest number is 4. So if I make this a half, and there's halves. There's, there's a half, a half, a half. So we're going by halves. So how about I go by halves and I see it. So if this is a half, this is 1. 1 and a half, 2. 2 and a half, 3. 3 and a half, 4. 4 and a half, 5. Negative 1 half, negative 1. Negative one and a half, negative two. Negative two and a half, negative three. Negative three and a half, negative four. Negative four and a half, negative five. Okay, so now there's our scale. So am I doing what this is asking? Determine a scale for the x-axis. We did that. Determine a scale for the y. That allow your coordinates to show on the grid. We did that. And now draw and label the coordinate plane, which we have done. And, and locate and label the set negative 14 comma 2, negative 12, negative 14 is here, 2 is here, negative 14 comma 2, negative 4 or comma negative 1 half, negative 4 comma negative 1 half is here, negative 4 comma negative 1 Neg or positive 6, right here, 2, 4, 6, negative 3 and a half. Negative three, six, negative three point five. Fourteen, comma, two point five. Fourteen. Zero, comma, three point five. Careful with the zeros. Move right, left, zero, go up three point five. We are on the y axis. Zero, comma. 3.5. Very important concept here. And then negative 8, negative 4. Negative 8, negative 4 is right here. Negative 8, negative 4. Okay. And there you have That's the end of lesson 17. Now go do your problem.